using the FET circuit simulator. The URL is very long. Here it is. Going into the browser. I've already gone to here. We are going to use lab. Here's your work area. Here are some basic elements. Here are some measuring devices and some controls that you can use. Uh, down here I'll show you this in a few minutes. Basic circuit to make is one involving a battery and a device called a resistor. Circuit 1 here is the circuit diagram for the circuit that you will be making. This is the symbol for a battery. The long line indicates the positive. Circle with an A in it stands for ammeter that measures current. A V with a circle around it, voltmeter, which measures potential difference, voltage. And the jagged line is a resistor. So I will leave this here so we can, if you refer back to it. So to build a circuit, the elements are over here. We need a battery. We need a resistor. We're going to need some wires to connect things. Uh, first, I will bring in, there's two different types of ammeters, and I will show you how to use both of them. One of them is more convenient. The other one is more similar to the ones we actually have in lab. Um, I will show you the one like the one we have in lab first. That's this one here. Then we need wires to connect the elements. Bring in one wire, move it until one end attaches to one end of the battery, and then drag the other end until it attaches to one end of the ammeter. This type of ammeter, the current must flow through it to be measured. It does not impede the, the current flow. Bring in another wire, set it so it's attached to the other end of the ammeter, so now the current can go through the ammeter, and it's measuring the current through this set of wires then drag to one end of the resistor, let go, and we need one more wire. Drag to the end of the resistor, let go, drag to the end of the battery and let go. And it starts running immediately. It shows the current of 9 amps. If we want to see what the battery is, we can click on it. And down here we can actually control the voltage on the battery if we want. So for instance I can make it 10 volts. Now we have one amp of current. If I click on the resistor, I can do the same thing. I can change its resistance using this slider. At the moment, it's 10 ohms. The FET is set up to show the flow of electrons because in a normal electric circuit, it is the electrons that are flowing. Um, however, Benjamin Franklin did not know this some hundred, several hundred years ago. So when we work with current, we end up defining the flow of current to be opposite the flow of the negative electrons. If I go over here on the upper right, click on conventional, that'll show the conventional flow of current, pretending that it is the flow of positive elements. So that flow of positive elements is opposite the actual flow of negative elements. I'll leave it this way for now. 
the other type of ammeter, this one here, is similar to one that, say, an electrician might have, where they don't have to actually hook the ammeter into the circuit itself. But they can simply put some measuring element over the wire, and it automatically measures the current without being part of the circuit. So the one ammeter has to be part of the circuit, so the current can flow through it without being impeded. The other type is able to inspect the wire without being part of the circuit. The other instrument we use is a voltmeter to measure potential difference voltage. It has a black lead and a red lead. By convention, the sign on the voltage meter will be positive if the red is at a higher potential than the black. So the black is lower, the red is higher, then you will get a positive number. So you click down on one of these probes, put it at one place you want to measure, click down the other probe, and it will now measure the potential difference between these two points in the circuit. That number is positive, the current is going from the higher to the lower. That is the basic circuit that you will be using to start with. Over here in the lower right, you have a couple of ways for it to show the circuit. One way is the way it looks now, which is similar to how it would look if you built this circuit. The other way, the right button here is more symbolic, using the types of symbols that would be used in a circuit diagram in a book or something. So if I click on that, it shows the battery symbol as a battery and it shows the resistor as a jagged line. It does not show the voltmeter in the ammeter in the standard symbols however. So I'll go back to the other view. There are a couple of pitfalls. I will switch over to the circuit diagrams and you can pause and try to build each one of those because each one illustrates a pitfall of building circuits, common pitfalls. And if these sorts of things happen, it gives you an idea of what to look for. The lower right, this button here, will clear out the screen. So let's go to that diagram, circuit number two here. shows the battery, the resistor, and the ammeter in the way we had them before, but now shows the ammeter across the resistor instead of a voltmeter. So pause the video, try to build this, and then I will show you what it looks like and what happens in this type of situation when you're using an ammeter improperly. Okay, so I'll bring in the battery. I'm going to arrange things like this. Bring this over here. I will bring in the two conventional ammeters. One here, one here. Rotate this around. So again, I'll take a wire, connect one end to one end of the battery, the other end to one end of the ammeter. Current flows through the ammeter, comes out another wire, takes it to the resistor. Notice it's not reading anything yet. Um, this is a pitfall that is not the one I'm showing you, but it shows that if you do not have a complete circuit, it's not going to run. Run the other wire, connect to one end of the resistor, and now finally, when I connect the battery, I have a complete circuit and the current can flow. Now for the problematic part. I'll bring in a wire, connect one end to one end of the ammeter, one end to one end of the resistor, bring in another wire, one end to one end of the ammeter, connecting the other end to a different point in the circuit. And that's the pitfall here, is that the ammeter 
is being connected at two different points in the circuit, so it is now going to provide an alternate path for the current, what's called a parallel arrangement. This original arrangement is a series arrangement. The current has to go through, let's go to conventional, it has to first go through the ammeter and then the resistor in series. When I connect this, it will provide a parallel path. There will now be two paths to go from here to here, through the resistor or through the ammeter, which does not want to impede the current. Let's see what happens. And it complains that it's going too fast, the current is really, really high because the program can't deal with it, and your battery catches fire, which is a very real possibility of this situation. We have created what's called a short circuit. We have created a zero impedance, zero resistance path between two points that are at different potentials, meaning a huge current. That's a situation that in your house could in fact lead to a fire. So this is one pitfall. If you see this symbol happening and this message, a huge amount of current and things just looking like they're going crazy and nothing really looking like it's going through the resistor. Everything is going through the current through the ammeter because it has no resistance. If you see these things it's indicating a short circuit. You have connected two points that are at different potentials with a zero impedance path. Um, that's true even if we take away let's see if we can break this delete. If I take away the meter and just connect with a bare wire, it's the same effect. It's a zero resistance path. And that again is a short circuit. You do not want to provide a zero resistance path between two different points in the circuit. Okay, so that is pitfall number one. In the actual lab, you could blow out the ammeter or the battery or power supply. Okay, let's clear this out. Go to the next pitfall circuit. Here we will have the battery and the ammeter and resistor and voltmeter all in series. So the current is going through the ammeter and then through the resistor and then through the voltmeter. So the voltmeter is not providing an alternate but instead is part of the actual circuit. So try to build that. We will see what happens. Okay, so battery. Conventional ammeter. Resistor. I'm rotating these just to make it look more like the circuit diagram. That's not absolutely necessary. And now the voltmeter. So a wire to attach one end of the battery to one end of the ammeter wire to attach the other end of the ammeter to the resistor so the current flows through the ammeter to get to the resistor. A wire connecting the resistor to one end of the voltmeter. A wire connecting the other end of the voltmeter to the battery. And you can see I see voltage. There's a potential difference between here and here but there's no current. We go back to the first diagram. The voltmeter is in that parallel arrangement. It could provide an alternate path for current, but it does not because a voltmeter is made to essentially provide infinite resistance to the current. It does not let current flow through itself. So when we put a voltmeter in this arrangement, it does not affect the circuit. Current cannot flow through it. So the pitfall here is that the voltmeter does not let current flow through it. It is as if there is no connection there at all, because in fact there is not. So a voltmeter has to be connected to two different points in the circuit. If I close up this wire, let the current flow, put one end of the voltmeter here, and the other end here, now the voltmeter can read properly. It is not affecting the current, there is no current flowing through it. There is a negative value here because we look at the flow of current, I put the red at one end at the negative end of the battery and the black at the positive end of the battery. Outside of the battery, 
the current is flowing from the positive to the negative. Within the battery, the flow is opposite because of chemical things that are going on. Okay, that is the introduction. It is totally web-based. You do not need to download anything to your computer. And if need be, if your instructor needs you to do so, you can take a screenshot or something to send to the instructor or whatever your instructor asks you to do. And that is the end of this basic introduction to the circuit construction FET.